Hey, meteorologist Travis Meyer here. We want to give you a review of 2025 and we're going to break it down month by month. And if you like snow, you might have liked maybe the beginning of the 2025 time period. We ended up with quite a bit of snow. Now, if you were north and west in our viewing area, you didn't get as much snow as the south and the east, but the south and east, Check this out. This was pretty impressive. A foot of snow. A lot of this fell between January 9th and January 10th. And in Tulsa for the month, basically we ended up with a amount of snow that you usually don't see. In fact, you have to go back to 2010 to the last time to having 6.4 inches of snow. So it was considered a snowy January. And of course, when it snows, a lot of people just kind of love it. And school is usually out if you get enough snow associated with that. Folks take pictures and they can build snowmen. And it was one of the few times you could actually build a monster snowman. So we had the opportunity to do that in some areas, especially if you get a foot of snow. Also, what was interesting in February is it ended up starting out really warm. We had a record 83 degrees to start the month. Then the middle of the month was really cold and we had record low high temperatures of 15 on the 19th and on the 20th, 16. That is some seriously cold air. So that was about the only month that ended up really colder than normal, and that was 4.3 degrees, which was pretty impressive. March comes along and all of a sudden there's fires. You might remember it. We had way too many fires, deadly fires as well. Unfortunately, there were four fatalities because of the fires and over 170,000 acres burned. And also during that month, we had 15 tornadoes. Average would be about 3.8 tornadoes. So that was a very active month. Didn't break a record, but it was still up there. Also for some of the strength of the winds, it was 60, 68 mile per hour winds in Tulsa, 74 mile per hour winds around Stillwater. And you remember the damage that occurred with those. And then all of a sudden it's like Owasso is suddenly becoming a little bit more tornado prone, you might say, as we had an Owasso tornado with an EF1 tornado of 100 to 110 miles per hour on April 2nd. And we had also 85 to 95 mile per hour winds with another tornado at 7 o'clock. So again, quite a bit going on. And also we had a water spout out at Lake Eufaula. So there was quite a bit of different tornado activity in several different areas. Probably the biggest thing that happened though is the month of April ended up having a record amount of rain. You just don't do that in April because April's crazy month to begin with. We had had the previous record set in 2017, almost 10 and a half inches, and then we made it to almost 11 inches as we looked at 2025. We also had some tornadoes and we had one very strong tornado is considered an EF3 tornado at Blanco. And then the rest of the tornadoes across our southeast parts of our viewing area included town to Gore, 10 killer bunch and down to Shady Point and Pecola. Those were EF1 tornadoes, but there was a lot of them. And in fact, speaking of which, we also had on June 6th a tornado outbreak with Vianne, Salisaw, McKee, Liberty, Cherokee. And then on June 7th, Tahlequah, McAllister, and there's nothing fortunate about having a tornado, but at least they were EF ones versus any stronger. The biggest thing though continues to be the amount of water that fell because it wasn't just April, but it ended up being May being the 23rd wettest and then June ended up being the third wettest. And then by the time you total that all together, that was the wettest period on record. And so that doesn't happen too often. Fortunately, and fortunately we didn't have a ton of flooding. So what about July? As we go into the last half, well, July ended up being kind of an interesting month because July is no, really notorious for being extremely hot, but it ended up being a little bit cooler than normal, believe it or not, by one degree. But I'll take that. I don't know about you. We did end up with our first 100 degree reading that happened on the 30th of 101, and it was hot as we started to head toward the end of July. The first part of July was pretty much amazing. Fourth of July with temperatures in the upper 80s. I can handle that. August, always hot but really wasn't all that bad. We ended up with August being about three degrees cooler than normal for the entire month. That is also very impressive. As you look at the pretty much anything in orange was at or above normal. Anything in blue was below normal. And that's a pretty good month right there. The biggest thing is 100 days, or I should say days with 100 degree temperatures. We only had two for the month, of, or I should say for the year of 2025. 2022 was the last time we had a horrible summer. That was 27 days. And then to me, the ultimate, since I've been in Tulsa, 2011 and 2012. Those were horrible. Those had 44 and 38 days respectively of 100 degree plus temperatures. That was an awful time. Also in August, we ended up with five days that were in the 70s. 
so that it ranked third. Not too often can you actually get those types of temperatures. So August ended up being kind of wild and interesting. September was pretty much near normal. Precipitation not too far from normal. Just a little bit above normal as far as temperatures for the month. And then October decided to get in the act as well. Wanted to be above normal. And we ended up with temperatures in the mid to upper 60s averaging. And then we ended up in basically 7th to 8th place on that. As you look at November, Oh yeah, we had to be warm there as well. We ended up with a temperature of 87 degrees. That was fourth warmest on record. And so we kind of have something going on there. Also, we had a couple of storms. One of them, Morrison, west of Tulsa, three and three quarter inch diameter size hail. That does a lot of damage. So that broke the previous record that we had for the Tulsa area of two and three quarter inches set back in 2003. But what I consider the crowning achievement of 2025 is the record number of days of high temperatures that managed to just blow away previous records in December at Christmas time. So right before Christmas happened and before Christmas Eve, we hit 77. We tied a record on Christmas Eve at 80. We broke the record on Christmas Day. Then we also ended up with the following day after Christmas with a record and then 86 degrees. Where does that rank? Well, that ranks as the all time highest temperature ever in the month of December. So you talk about a wild 2025. Yeah, but hang on for 2026. I'm meteorologist Travis Meyer.